everyone, Pam Gregory, Astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the first half of November and in particular an amazing full supermoon that we're going to be having on the third or fourth of the month, depending on where in the world you live. And that's going to be really special. So one of the main themes of, of November, I believe, is about releasing what no longer serves you, releasing old repressed emotions, releasing old patterns, and I'll talk more about that later in this video. Now we're well aware that Jupiter has now moved into Scorpio. It did that on the 10th of October and it will stay in Scorpio until November 2018. So for all of us this can produce a period of intense transformation. It's going to focus on issues such as sexuality. It's going to make us want to connect to people more deeply and shed the superficialities. It's going to shine a light on secrets perhaps to do with sexuality such as we've seen with the Hollywood scandals recently and anything which has been criminal or underhand those things are very related to Scorpio may again come to be revealed as well through this whole 13 month period and for us personally it will be about digging deep. It will be about um, exploring areas such as astrology, which I think will be uh, become much more popular, psychology, all forms of spirituality, alternative healing, past lives very much because people want to dig deep into their past. And so this can produce something really wonderful for us in terms of transformation. And as a guide, Jupiter is moving in this first half of November between 4 and 7 degrees of Scorpio. Now go back in your life to October and November 205. See where the early degrees of Scorpio sit in your chart, that's very important because don't remember everything that's going that was going on in your life in October, November 205. Just focus on the area of life where those early degrees of Scorpio sit in your chart. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this link above and then you can get two videos which will explain all of this and will enable you to understand so much more of what I'm talking about in these in these regular updates. So whatever was happening for you then, think of the Jupiter symbolism of opportunity, travel, study, personal growth, higher consciousness subjects, whatever was happening for you there linked to that area of life, you may well see an echo this time around again. It tends to spiral upwards. Whatever was happening last time, you get a repeat. Not of your entire life, just of that particular area of life. And that's why it's so instructive to understand where these um, areas fall, fall in your chart, because you can watch your patterns unfold rather than just me explaining it every time. And that gets very empowering and exciting for people. So, we also have in the early part of the month, we have the Moon, Mercury and Jupiter all moving through Scorpio. By the 7th of the month, Venus joins the party in Scorpio and a little later in the month, we have a new Moon also in Scorpio. So people with a Scorpio emphasis, in fact, for the next year, next 13 months, but through November particularly with those wonderful planets in Scorpio, People with a Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Ascendant or any emphasis in Scorpio may really feel blessed and experience a lot of success, again depending where Scorpio falls in your chart. Then on the 3rd of the month at 10.22pm Pacific and the 4th of the month at 6.22am UK time, we have a beautiful full supermoon at 11 degrees 58 minutes of Taurus, almost 12 degrees of Taurus. Now a supermoon is where the moon comes very close to the earth in its orbit, there's a much stronger gravitational pull on the tides and the moon is going to look huge um, at this full moon, it's, it's really going to be magnificent so I'd really encourage you to, to be outside to witness this. So a full moon is always where we bring things to completion or culmination or we see the fruits of our labour, we see a closure. So see where 12 degrees of Taurus is falling for you and start to anticipate what this full moon supermoon may be about. 
As always, at a full moon, secrets can be revealed, particularly at this one, because it's a very big one. Um, so we, we may see more revealed at that time. But Taurus is about the, the earth. It's about nature. I think very much of fertility and creativity with Taurus. I think of the Empress in the Tarot, surrounded by all the abundance of the harvest. And of course, we're, we're just moving beyond harvest time, but into these stunning autumn colours, and certainly in the Northern Hemisphere. So it, it, it gives a, a sense of your senses are heightened. So the sense of smell and touch and sight, all those senses are, are heightened. So really appreciate the, the beauty and the colour in nature. Think about your creativity and what you can do with, with all of that. Um, be in nature and, and sense the simple rhythms of the earth. Get in touch with the simple rhythms of the earth. And Taurus is about having your basic security needs met. So be grateful for that. Be grateful that you may have clean water and fresh air because, you know, not all parts of the world have that. So the more we can resonate to an attitude of gratitude, as I'm sure you know, the more we can bring good things in for ourselves. And what emphasises all of this um, abundance at this full moon is also that Jupiter is conjunct the sun and opposing the moon at this full moon. So Jupiter again is about, it could be about material abundance. So if this full moon at 12 of Taurus is falling in your second house, your sixth house, your 10th house of your chart, you could see a lot of success and financial abundance. And Jupiter always sees things in terms of bigger and better possibilities too. What's very interesting at this full moon supermoon is that Venus at 25 of Libra, is tightly conjunct to Homia, the, the dwarf planet that is connected to the protection and regeneration of the Earth. And they are both opposing Uranus and Eris, the spiritual warrior, both in Aries. We also have Ceres, the Earth goddess, the goddess of agriculture, which is at 12 degrees of Leo, almost exactly squaring the sun and the moon at this full supermoon. So that is emphasising, again, the earth, nature and agriculture. And in addition, at this full moon, we have Saturn at 24 Sagittarius, very close to the galactic centre, exactly squaring Chiron at 24 of Pisces. So that's about a feeling of global woundedness. So for me, one of the big themes of this Taurus full supermoon is Issues around climate, pollution, desecration, extreme weather events coming to a peak at this full moon, super moon, shining a light on those issues. And let's just hope with the stronger tides at this full moon, we, we don't see any more disasters because we had the most horrendous floods and fires. We're all well aware of that. And it's very easy, I think, at um, during November when we have the full moon in Taurus and the new moon later in Scorpio, those are both fixed retentive signs. They like to hang on to what they've got. They, there's a grasping often, um, a possessiveness to, to hang on to whatever um, they've currently got and don't want to let go. And that can keep us small because I was very moved recently. A friend on Facebook had been very involved. It was very close to her, her land and her home in the um, fires in the middle of Portugal. And one would think it's very easy with all that fear and Scorpio and Taurus are very connected to, to fear and hanging on, that everyone would have retreated into their own property and stayed small. But Jupiter brought out a bigger and better possibility for them because they got together as a community, fought the fire, partly successfully, and have got, now got a much greater sense of connection and community. So even though times can be really extreme, there's always something in terms of new energy and new possibility that we can bring out of it. And I was really moved by that, that story, actually very humbled by it. So, But I think issues around, around the earth, around nature, around climate, around pollution are going to come more and more to the fore and wake people up that we have to protect the planet that we live on. Um, it's, it's just so important.
Now there's another beautiful aspect at this full moon, which actually is going to continue on and off till next September. And this is a trine between Jupiter in Scorpio, the early degrees, and Neptune at 11 of Pisces. Now, trines are normally, I don't talk about them so much because they're more passive, but they are supportive. And because this trine is lasting a very long time and really has a, an exquisite energy to it, um, this fine perception, um, that's why I feel it will be it will be important. This is this is mystical. This is mysterious. It's about unconditional love. It's about miracles. It's very much about about healing because Jupiter and Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, very connected to healing, particularly alternative healing. Pisces is always connected to healing, energy healing, alternative healing, and so together they can really accelerate our transformation, Jupiter in Scorpio, by um, bringing in some new modalities or new ways of looking at how we can heal to help shift our consciousness. But I almost don't have the words for this energy around this full supermoon because of this exquisite quality of um, Jupiter trining Neptune. But I just want to encourage you to be in nature, to immerse yourself in the moonlight because you can really shift your consciousness at that time. Just be bathed in moonlight and be grateful for what nature and the earth can provide for us. It's, it, I'm, as I say, I'm losing, I'm losing vocabulary uh, here, really. Um, the other thing we should look for in this first half of November is that Venus at 25 of Libra is going to be exactly opposing Uranus, which I've mentioned earlier, at 25 of Aries. And they are both being squared a little bit widely, but nevertheless squared by Pluto. So this is around issues of relationship. If you have Venus or Uranus in either the currently, not in your natal chart, but currently moving through your first your fifth or your seventh houses in your chart, if you're not already in a relationship, this can bring about a new and very exciting relationship for you. Maybe someone younger, maybe someone foreign, maybe someone who isn't around all the time, but it can feel like you are emotionally awakening. If that isn't happening, there could well be a, a shake-up in relationships. We've had this before, actually, and it keeps repeating, that there may be this tension between control and security in a relationship and freedom and independence. Walking your talk, being true to yourself, and therefore stepping out a little bit from the stagnant patterns that may have been developing in the relationship. Uranus breaks up stagnation. And here it's about relationship very much, Venus in Libra. So this can bring some new dynamics at a minimum into relationship for you. So that's really um, a very exciting area too. So there's a lot going on in this first, um, first half of November. The other thing I'd like to mention is on the 13th of November, we have an exact conjunction between Venus and Jupiter at 7 of Scorpio. So see where Seven of Scorpio falls in your chart, and that could really be, a, again, a beautiful area of success and abundance for you on the 13th. So really feel this full moon, super moon in Taurus. Feel it. Go with it. Be with the flow of the earth. Be creative. Feel abundant, even if it's just sitting and, and looking at the colours of nature. Try and inspire yourself with the energy that's coming up, because it truly is going to be a magnificent full moon, super moon at 12 degrees of Taurus. If you'd like more information about my books, my um, newsletter, monthly newsletter, my many video tutorials, the forum that we now have, the very active buzzing forum we now have um, for readers of how to co-create using the secret language of the universe, please just um, check out my website, check out Facebook, and um, it's all there for you. But people are really enjoying the experience of learning more about astrology. It has so much to give us.
Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful first half of November. Bye for now.